Hi, thanks so much. We're here today in Building 7 um, in one of our spacesuit labs. So we've got Mark Chupichu here with us uh, to talk about uh, the spacewalk going on tomorrow with uh, Anton Shkaplerov and Oleg Kononenko. Um, Mark is uh, the, the lead um, EVA um, manager for all Russian spacewalks here with NASA and also a manager, uh, flight and increment manager for uh, for EVAs as well, right? Did That's I get correct. that good? Okay. Right. So he's going to tell us a little bit about um, what that means, what he does, first of all, and then we'll talk about the spacewalk. Well, what I do, oh, first of all, thanks. It's very nice to be here. Uh, what I do is I, I oversee all aspects of EVA for the EVA office. That includes operations, hardware, uh, logistics, uh, and including safety as well. I also chair the Joint EVA Working Group, which is a bilateral U.S. and Russian group, mm -hmm. where we oversee all the aspects of our EVAs together. So. And we also try to resolve issues that we have to work out together. Um, that's a, my main yeah, so how, yeah. How much involvement does, does NASA have when we have a Russian spacewalk coming up? Uh, we, we do uh, get involved pretty, pretty in-depth. We, uh, we get uh, all the information uh, from our Russian counterparts, um, and we, we get that to the ISS program office and make sure everything is within requirements, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We also lend them some of our tools for the EVAs. Uh, so we do uh, get involved. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we can just kind of sit back and relax just because none of our crew members are going out? No, not at all. No. Uh, our crew members do help out as well to get prepared for EVA, so mm -hmm. they get involved as well. Okay. So um, it's spacewalk is tomorrow. What, what are they going to be doing tomorrow morning as they get ready for the spacewalk? Uh, in the morning, uh, the crew will first don their, their, their gear, um, liquid cooling garments. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we actually have somebody here at do. Russell in a liquid cooling garment, so we can get a look at what that actually is. As so. you can see, the uh, liquid cooling garment has uh, tubes uh, all the way up down to the knees, around the arms, and basically what that does is allow the, the crew to uh, regulate cooling water through their uh, LCGs, so that way they can regulate the temperature so they feel comfortable when they work inside the suit. Yeah, I guess um, there's not, it gets pretty cold or pretty hot in space depending on whether you're in the sun or That's in the correct. shade. That's correct. And so this is how we help them stay comfortable. Yep. Okay, thank you so much, Russell. Uh, once they have their gear on, they will um, ingress the airlock, mm -hmm. um, uh, close the hatch, do some leak checks of the hatch. They will uh, ingress the, uh, the suits, mm -hmm. um, close the suits, and do some leak checks with, on the suits, as well as the uh, prime and backup airlocks. Mm -hmm. They'll do a pre-breathe uh, when they get all the nitrogen out of the body, uh, mm -hmm. start breathing pure oxygen, and then they will um, basically switch to autonomous power. They go off the umbilicals, open the, the hatch, and go out EVA. So it sounds a lot like a U.S. spacewalk. It's very similar. Yeah. Yes. Are there any major differences? Uh, some of the differences is how they ingress the suits. The suits are built differently. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the process is a little different. Uh, the pre brief times are also a little different. Uh, okay. Because the suit pressures are different. Yeah, and speaking of the suits, we've got an Orlon the Russian spacesuit here behind us mm -hmm. um, that we can take a look at. Maybe you can point out some of the, the features on it. Sure. Sweet spot. If you see in the front, you'll see a, a electronics control panel on top on the left. And here you have a, a fluid a pneumo hydraulic control panel. Um, what does that do? With this one, the crew regulates the oxygen mm -hmm. inside the suit and also the cooling. This lever right here regulates the coolant they get through the liquid cooling garment. Okay. On the control panel, they regulate all their fans, their pumps, mm -hmm. um, any messages, error messages, and so, and so on. Okay. And this, this suit is a little different than the one they'll actually be wearing tomorrow, right? Correct. This is an Orlon M. The suits on orbit are called Orlon MK. The extra K is for computer. So okay. the suit on orbit now has a computer. Um, so the, the crew has a lot more interaction through a computer rather than it was analog before. Okay, okay. So this is just an older version, a little, a little bit, bit upgraded on, on orbit for them Correct. to use. But, um, so it, it, you know, I guess the it other looks things, very different from the U.S. suits. Yes, and the other things to point out are the, the two tethers you see here. The crew uses these two tethers to translate outside ISS. Mm -hmm. And they attach these to the handrails and they translate across the ISS this way. Okay. Okay, so um, on the U.S. spacesuit, you've got kind of the, the bearing where the waist connects and then different, you know, connection points for the shoulders and, and wrist and things like that, right? Correct. So this is pretty different. The Orlon is a one-size-fit-all spacesuit. Really? Uh, all the crew does is they size to their 
to their measurements um, using the levers on the, the arms and on the legs. And Levers? Yeah, they have, <coughs> the newer suit has a nice little lever that they wear. Cranks it shorter or longer, right. depending on what you need? It lets it out or, or tightens up, okay. depending on the size of the crew members. Interesting. Um, so all they really do, they ingress the suit from the back. Okay. Let me show you here. This door opens up. The crew sits inside mm -hmm. on, the, on the lower part of the door, gets their hands in through the, uh, through the arms ducks in, make sure they don't hit their head, and then they basically just sit inside the suit. It's very convenient. Okay. And I know we're looking at rear entry suits for our future space suits, huh? Going to the moon and Mars, that's right. true. Great. Okay. So um, once you get in, I guess close the door and it's once all you get sealed in, up tight? You uh, close the door. You do have to attach the gloves. That's the only thing that, okay. that they have to do. That's the last thing. They, they attach the gloves and then they're ready to go. Okay, and that takes about how long? The whole process from getting inside the airlock to go out the door is about two and a half, three hours. Okay, that's a long time to get ready in the morning, huh? That's right. But they've got a lot of work to do once they get out there. Yes, um, once they get out there, um, the spacewalk tomorrow, uh, we'll call it Russian EVA 30, uh, they have two prime tasks. The first task is to relocate one of the two uh, cargo cranes, mm -hmm. called Estrella, which is Russian word for arrow. They will relocate it from the docking compartment up Zenith to the M1M2, mm -hmm. the mini research module number two. Okay. That task is going to take around three and a half, four hours. It's a ma major part of the EVA. Uh, the reason they re they're relocating it is to get, get it off of DC-1, which next year is going to be deorbited. DC-1 uh, is? Docking compartment one. Um, and the reason it's being deorbited is because the Russians are launching a new module called the Multipurpose Logistics mod uh, Laboratory Module, MLM, mm -hmm. and it's going to be docked in the same port that DC-1 is right now. Okay. The other main task is to install MOD shields, five of those. Those are micrometeoroid micro orbital debris shields. That's that correct. Them from so five of those shields will be installed in the service module, and that should help uh, decrease the risk of MOD strikes penetrating the ISS. Mm -hmm. That task is about two hours. If there's time left, the crew have planned three get-aheads, each about 20 minutes each. Uh, one's in a, a materials experiment called Dinosivost, which means endurance in Russian. Uh, it will be installed on handrails on the MRM2. Mm -hmm. The second is a material, uh, is a um, biological experiment called TEST, mm -hmm. and the crew is actually going to try to see if, if they, there's microorganisms living under the MLI on the, on the uh, vehicles. And the third uh, get a task is uh, to install some support struts on the EVA ladder on, DC, on the docking compartment. The EVA ladder has shown that it's, it's moving a little bit, so these support struts will help it uh, firm up. Sure, okay. All right, so um, and all it's supposed to be about six hours? It's roughly six hours. Okay. Uh, according to the timeline. And um, you mentioned earlier that sometimes we, we loan them tools, U.S. tools to use. That's correct. I think one of the things we'll loan them this time is helmet cameras, right? So they do have helmet cameras. We, we lend them our, our lights and the helmet cameras on each suit. Um, so we'll be able to get some really good views That's on EVA. Nice. We also, um, where you see here, we actually have a, a piece of hardware called the Orlon Tether Adapter that the crew installs. And with it, they can use a lot of our tool caddies, our, um, our retractable tethers, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And they will also use our photo cameras, digital still cameras as well. What will the rest of the crew be doing inside while, while this is going on? <clears throat> the other four crew members, um, two of them will be isolated in the MRM2 and the, because their Soyuz is docked to that module, and that's Commander Burbank mm -hmm. and Flight Engineer Ivanishin. And our other two U.S. crew members are Don Pettit and, and uh, USS crew members, uh, Andre Kuypers, and they will be in the FGB uh, during the EVA. And that's dictated by where they're leaving the station for the spacewalk and what that cuts off from access? Correct, because that's their Soyuz mm -hmm. is their rescue vehicle, so they need to be close to that. Okay. But they'll be, as much as they can, kind of going about their, their regular business. That is true. They all have activities planned <laughs> uh, during the EVA, and it's... Actually, when we do the relocation of the Strela, uh, uh, if, if needed, the crew can go and look and make sure and help guide them if, if, if they're tight clearances. Mm -hmm. So they will be ready for, to support. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with us.